Um, I'm so excited to be here. Um, well, it's my first time giving a talk like this, but I hope that I would be able to give you some information that's useful to you and also maybe inspire you in some ways. Well, I didn't realize that I had to hold so many gadgets, so I might be a little awkward today, but um, I guess today what I'm trying to tell you is that there's something very deep here, but I will keep it very light and simple. Um, the topic of today, thanks to my manager, because she came up with the topic, um, it's the beauty of social change and social media. But don't worry, it's not as um, intense as it, as it sounds. Um, I'm going to share a little bit of my story. Um, my background is very far off from what I am today. Okay, what am I today? Um, people call me the beauty queen. Um, but I'm far off from that. I used to be a nerd in school, um, knew nothing about makeup, would never wear heels, and would always be in jeans and t-shirts. And came out thinking that one day I would conquer the world by being a successful entrepreneur or someone professional. Well, that's what my parents taught me to do. You know, as a lot of Asian parents would always encourage us to do something that is well set, stable, you know, decided, predestined, professional job, and that's what I did. I did architecture. Um, it's an amazing profession. I love it, I love design, and I applaud you for doing something that requires a lot of hard work in university, and that is actually the part of your life that you should be investing a lot in educating yourself, whether it's the information or really just practicing discipline after discipline after discipline because that would basically prepare you for what's to come in life. Well, for me, it is a journey that changed sort of overnight, or in a better context, I would say about a couple of months. I joined the competition with a push of someone very important to me, my best friend, also manager, said, Carrie, please, you know, it's time, you know, join the pageant. And for me, I have always wondered what it would be like on the other side of the world. You know, I come out graduating in architecture with full scholarship. Um, I've always been a nerd in my life. Never ever said, Carrie, you're beautiful. They always say, Carrie, you're smarty pants. You know, you're a nerd. You sit in school, stick to your books, no boys, you know, no fun life, you know, you don't go partying. Ouch. Um, yes, ouch, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was what I was programmed to do, maybe, by my parents, you know, as I think a lot of you might share that same um, pretext with me, you know, Asian parents do encourage us to do a certain things in life so that you would be secure, you'll never be out of job. I don't think that's very true, to be honest. You can still be graduated with an amazing certificate and still have the risk of not having a job. In fact, the guy who probably used to be a bully in school, um, who is street smart, came up to do business and probably earned way more than even my parents did. So what I'm trying to say is that that push gave me no courage at all. I was scared to the core to join this competition because I knew nothing about makeup. I was scared in front of the camera. And what do you think the beauty queen is? It's so many stereotypes that all of you might be familiar with that is actually untrue. We stand there, we parade ourselves, you know, um, glorify ourselves as the ideal of physical beauty. And we're supposed to be confident. We speak generally okay, might be a little ditzy. We don't know much about the world except that we want world peace. Um, <laughs> to a certain extent, that might be true. Um, that's the stereotype of it, but when you see the competition on TV, you see one day, one hour. We put in 21 days in a country we do not know, unable to contact with anybody. It's a boot camp on its own. That's what I went through before I actually won the competition. I was the underdog of the entire competition. I was the only one who was not a model, not a talent, um, not a blogger, no one famous, not a socialite. I came in with my best jeans. Actually, I had to go to Forever 21 to buy my only jeans that was tight enough so that I could show some curves. 
Um, went in there, you know, breathed through it. But I think what really, really made me who I am today is because I was different from the rest. I was not like any of those girls. I had 17 finalists, they were Brazilian, mixed Chinese, sexy supermodels, and I was in my context never near to what those girls were. That's probably my self-esteem speaking. If you were to do a debate with me, I know girl, you would lose to me, but you know, standing as a supermodel, I'll probably shy away and say, I'll stand at the back, you know, because I'm taller than the rest. That's what my school taught me. The taller girls would stand at the back. <laughs> so, well, that didn't quite happen. I realized soon enough that a competition is still a competition. I had to be in the TV reality show. Has any one of you ever wanted to be on a TV reality show? Show of hands. Okay, good. Well, um, I would say it's not a bad thing. It's really made me into someone that is quite fearless and a little bit funnier than before. Um, I don't generally find myself to be a jokester, but I see some of you are laughing at my jokes, even though it wasn't supposed to be jokes. Um, well, I would say my first learning curve was to take risk. A lot of us do what our parents tell us to do and to do professional degrees and um, really get an education, which is very, very important. Um, so your parents don't come after me. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is that after that, what do you do? After I got my degree, what do you do? The first thing was to face my fears and really find that all the opportunities lies in the risk that you take. Change demands attention. If you don't accept change, you're not there to conquer change and to challenge yourself for change, you're never going to go anywhere. So that was my first plunge. And when I won, won the competition, I would say, well, let me change the slide. Okay. So that was me when I won the competition and when I was, well, sent to Moscow. And when I won the competition, everyone called me fat. Everyone called me ugly and said that I was nowhere the top five favorites that the public wanted as the queen from Malaysia. And they say, how can you send a Chinese girl that looks nothing like a beauty queen and who only thinks she's smart to an international pageant? Well, I had one year, and that's the one year that I'll be talking about as the present. And quickly, I think after that, I realized that the risk opened up opportunities not only in the assets of people that I meet, but also opening and exposing yourself to different standards of the world. Well, the first thing the director came to me when I won the pageant was that, Carrie, you got to look like a Victoria's Secret model. I looked at myself and I'm like, really? How am I going to do that? Like, without any help of... Um, you know, what they call aesthetics and plastic surgery and all that. I don't, we, we don't, in Malaysia, the pageant's not as huge as to where all the sponsors come to you and say, hey, I'm going to fix your nose, you know. Um, so, well, I'm fighting against the Venezuelans and the Spanish countries and um, whatnot that has every equipment in the world to help them look like a Victoria's Secret model. But well, that, that didn't stop me. And my philosophy then that helped me for my branding today is to always stay true to yourself. And the only version that you strive to be is to be the best version of yourself. Because that's on, the only way you can get respect. So for me, I work really, really hard so that I don't have to paint my abs, so that I look good on stage. And it was the grueling, I would say, six months of my life not having a rise at all, um, really going through intense training and also mental preparation for the pageant. So I helped build myself a little faster after because people pay attention to what you do, all the risks that you take. People remembered me as the girl next door who had nothing. The fashion industry remembered me as the girl who knew nothing about beauty and after that, there came me, 
this is the pe person that everyone sees me now. But what I really am is this reserved, really dorky, really shy girl that used to be stuck to my architecture books, building models, and I'm not cool. So, um, well, but I would say that there are two things that's really important while building your career in any sense, especially if you wish to market yourself also as a brand yourself. That means the product is yourself. Whether you're an engineer, um, you're a doctor, you do realize that the doctors that make it out there would probably know how to market themselves a little better than the rest of them. So there are two things. First impressions. So your visuals, your social media, and your marketing. I think those are the things that you have to know even though you never studied them. And the second thing is that your greatest asset are the people around you, your networks, your team. I am now the national director of Miss Universe Malaysia and the youngest and also the most inexperienced in all the other countries. It took me one year to get here, which actually made a lot of people hate me because, well, who is this girl? What does she have, you know, what credits does she have in order to achieve and run an entire company? And you do realize that one day, this is an, a really unsustainable business. This industry that I'm in is an unsustainable business. But how do you be sustainable in this unsustainable business? Always think about first impressions. Every encounter is the first impression. That's how you keep things fresh, you keep things exciting, and you keep things real. So for me, I think that what I'm trying to say is that social media is something that a lot of the people in my peer industry bangs on. And it's something that has the highest reach and that allows me to share my story. Well, most of my story in my daily life would be just like any other. That's how people relate to me and to understand that I too live a life with my family, uh, with my friends and, you know, I have an education and I used to be someone who had a dream of, you know, being a star architect. One day maybe building the tallest tower again over Malaysia, you know, but that didn't happen, but it doesn't stop your dream because what I believe in is that you can create your own career. You don't need a predefined career. You make a career out of things that you're passionate about and the things that you live for. And this is what I'm living for right now. And I'm not talking about beauty. I'm not pressing it right. Okay, so that thereafter I quickly become a nobody to face and muses for fashion, local fashion industries. So that is something that's really, really important in my industry because fashion and beauty comes part and parcel. And it's something that's not easy to work on. Remember when I said people are your assets. So that's how I got into hosting and really dabbled on also with other people that I knew about. And like I said, fan base is super important. I think when I talk about fan base, don't think about the superficial fans. It's your supporters and people who believe and are loyal to your product or whatever you speak of. Whether it's something that you market, whether it's something that you sell, or your services. Whether you're a doctor, people, fan base, who are loyal to what you do and your expertise are very, very important. So this is just something that's applicable to everywhere else. My perks are that I meet amazing people um, everywhere and also boys. I have a little black book of 88 most beautiful women in the world. So that's something that don't come by easy. Well, I would say that I had, these are just things that I'm trying to say to build. These are things that I thought of when I was a child that would never happen to me. What I'm trying to say here, I'm not rubbing it in anyone's face, okay? I'm just trying to say that if you are willing to do things that are out of the box, things out of the box that you never dream of will come to you, okay? Okay, so well, the last thing I would say is that 
we're all here for a bigger reason, okay? I'm doing this only because I fell into it, and it's the best thing that has ever happened to me, because I don't think I ever want to sit behind a desk doing something that I don't love, or something that doesn't excite me every morning. But the bigger thing is that now I have the chance to really build a legacy of my own. And last year, when I was so privileged to become the National Director of Miss Universe in Asia, everyone said, why do you want to even do that? Why don't you just do architecture, be a respectable architect, and you know, go spread inspiration everywhere? But I finally realized that me mentoring girls every day is the best kind of legacy I would leave. I am also someone who these girls look up to. And I'm, I'm pretty young myself, I'm not that old, so. I actually feel like I'm a mom to 17 finalists every year, making sure that they groom in the best way possible inside out, meaning they have what they stand for. I make sure all of them stand for a cause and really make a change in some way within their one year span. And that's something that would hopefully create a ripple effect. And our legacy this year, the Miss Universe in Asia, is actually working active, actively with um, Malaysian AIDS Foundation. And we're very, very proud to say that we raised 100,000 ringgit for them and will continue to do so every single year. And it's something that I feel proud to speak of because I think all of the superficial things that lead on to you being an influencer in other people's lives can allow you to make changes that are impending, that are needed, that are necessary. So what else that we're doing this year is, well, just a little background story, the girl that I'm mentoring now, the current Miss Universe Malaysia, is facing a lot of bullying on social media. And I think that's something that maybe a lot of people are very well aware of. Social media is a crazy place right now. Um, so we're actually running a social media campaign across Singapore and Malaysia uh, come September. So any of one of you are passionate about something that's related to cyber, um, do come to me. Maybe we could work something out. And also I would say that the legacy that I leave behind would hopefully not just be through Miss Universe Malaysia. We're actually looking to build a school um, under Miss Universe Malaysia for young women um, to empower them and actually groom them in the best way possible because they don't understand what soft skills are needed in order to achieve the kind of gender equality that we deserve. So, beauty pageants, strike that off. It's a stepping stone for maybe some girls, but beauty pageants are not what you think they are. What you see is one hour out of 21 days they've been working for. So, I hope to one day tell you more about it, but today I have zero seconds left. So thank you very much for listening to me, and thank you for having me today.